you're driving, the light turns green. Then, zap, a bolt of electricity shoots through your head. Your vision flickers, a rushing sound. The world tilts, and just like that, it's gone. But you're left asking, did my brain just short circuit? If you've recently stopped, reduced, or even missed a dose of your SSRI, or an SNRI, paroxetine, sertraline, fluoxetine, venlafaxine, this might sound familiar. The internet calls it a brain zap. Medicine ignored it for years, but today we're changing that. We'll cover what brain zaps actually are, why they happen right down to the ion channels, how an old neurological sign helps explain it, and what you can do to ride them out safely. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant, psychiatrist, and educator. So let's ask the question, what are brain zaps? Brain zaps feel like sudden electrical jolts in the head. Some people call it a crackle, a whoosh, or even a head hiccup. They usually last about a second. Some feel them just in the head. Others describe a zap down the spine or arms. Sometimes there's disorientation, like your brain skipped a frame. And here's the strange part. They're often triggered by quick eye movements or head turns. Blink left, zap. Look over your shoulder, zap. I'll explain why that matters soon. But first, why did medicine miss this for so long? You see, brain zaps don't show on scans. There's no blood test. The language patients use zap, buzz, static, isn't really found in textbooks. Early guidelines also focused on flu-like symptoms, not the electric zaps. But patients kept reporting them. Two major surveys with over 2,000 people found 80% of individuals had zaps after stopping SSRIs suddenly. Shorter acting medications like paroxetine caused them sooner than longer acting ones like fluoxetine. Eye movements were a consistent trigger. It was real, it was patterned, and it was ignored for too long. So let's look at what's happening in the brain. To understand brain zaps, we need to talk about three brain breaks. Break one, iron channels. You see, long-term SSRIs reduce fast sodium and potassium flow. That keeps the neurons calmer. Break two, the serotonin gate. Serotonin blocks some sensory signals, keeping things smooth in the brain's background. Break three, the locus ceruleus suppression. Serotonin also holds back the locus ceruleus, the brain's noradrenaline center, which regulates alertness and arousal. So in other words, serotonergic potentiation through SSRI can dampen down amygdala overactivity. Now, stop your SSRI suddenly. All three brakes come off. Iron channels become hyperexcitable, serotonin crashes, sensory gates swing open, and noradrenaline floods the system. We see a rebound. It's like pulling all the dampers off an audio system and then tapping the mic. All this hyperexcitability sits primed waiting for a physical trigger. So what's the physical trigger? A mere half a millimeter stretch of cervical proprioceptive fibers can be the spark. In simple terms, these are the fibers that mediate touch and pressure, which takes us back to a century-old neurological curiosity. In 1924, neurologist Jean Lermit described a phenomenon. People with spinal cord lesions felt electric shocks when they bent their necks. The mechanism? something called effaptic transmission, where demyelinated fibers literally eavesdropping on each other when stretched. In simple terms, this is nerve fibers misfiring when they're stretched. And even though SSRI zaps don't involve lesions, they follow the same logic. Large myelinated fibers, mechanical movement, eye or head turns, electric sensations in the head or down the spine, in both cases, nerves fire off abnormally. The difference in SSRI withdrawal, the nerves aren't damaged. They're just overly reactive. So SSRI zaps are about functional hyperexcitability. Myelin is intact, but channels are irritable. So when you dart your eyes left, the vestibular ocular reflex tugs on the cervical and brainstem pathways. These pathways already on edge, stretched from chemical rebound, fire off in synchrony creating an internal thunderclap. So think of it as a chemical version of Lermit's sign. The brain's on edge and even small movements can spark a thunderclap. So what can we do about it? First, let's start with tapering. Make sure you check out this video on the neuroscience of withdrawal because 
SSRI withdrawal isn't just about tapering. There's more to it. The taper strategy is about reducing the medication slowly in an individualized way. So we're not following a formula. We're working together with the patient. If zaps show up, pause, create stability, and then try again. If withdrawal becomes especially challenging, ask your doctor about liquid versions or strips. Here, other supports help. Stay hydrated, keep sleep regular, especially REM rebound can worsen zaps. So make sure you address them. Move gently, avoid fast head turns for now. Low impact exercise like walking or yoga is better than high intensity. And in some cases, medications help and are needed. These include agents that reduce amygdala hyperactivity and also reduced iron channel hyperexcitability, such as gabapentin or pregabalin, low-dose carbamazepine, lamotrigine, or clonidine or prazosin. The choice of the agent depends on the clinical symptoms. Now, most brain zaps resolve with time and appropriate tapering. But seek medical attention if you experience weakness or numbness in limbs, vision changes that are persistent, loss of bladder or bowel control. Here, one may need an organic evaluation such as blood tests, B12, folate, thyroid electrolytes. And if medical symptoms are significant, possibly an MRI to rule out neurological conditions. Here's why there's hope. The science is finally catching up. New findings show that zap timing correlates with how long a drug stays in the body. fMRI shows changes in sensory circuits during withdrawal. Early trials of eye movement and balance therapy show promise in reducing symptoms. In the future, we may have apps that guide tapering based on symptom tracking. We may even have medications that prevent the worst of the rebound. For now, we have knowledge and that goes a long way. We can make a difference by implementing the principles that I just discussed. So let me summarize all of this for you. If your brain feels like it's glitching after stopping an SSRI, you're not alone. You're not imagining it. You're going through a real reversible reaction between your brain chemistry and your nervous system. With the right approach, the right taper, pacing, support, the storm passes. If this helped, share it with someone else navigating the same road. Hit the like button as it tells the algorithm that this video matters. And subscribe to our channel to stay in touch with all our future videos. I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae. Stay supported, stay informed, and stay curious. Until next time, bye-bye.